Hello everyone in YouTube, welcome back to Cthulhu vs. the zombie flu apocalypse in Germany. So we're currently in week two of the coronavirus lockdown, um, and actually the uh, restrictions in Germany have, especially in Cologne at the very least, have gotten much stricter. We are still allowed to leave our apartments, but um, essentially any gathering of more than two people is now forbidden. And, of course, all the gyms are still closed, all sporting areas are still closed, all sporting events are still closed, and honestly, I'm pretty sure if I were grappling with someone in, in the park, I'd probably get arrested for some sort of violation of a restriction we're not allowed to do. So, that means it's the second week of trying to find a way to train without training partners. And that means, for me, going back to my grappling dummy and working a bit more on my takedowns. I'm notoriously bad at takedowns, so it's actually a really good chance for me to work on something I'm bad at. And this week, I thought it'd be also really interesting in this video to go into a couple of the advantages and disadvantages in dummy training, because there are a couple of advantages that are, I think, less understood or less obvious, and a couple of disadvantages I think a lot of people might not quite understand at the beginning and I think it's good to highlight those because that will help us actually plan our dummy training routines a bit more effectively knowing oh okay these sorts of things are going to be bad for dummy training these sorts of things are going to be more geared toward dummy training these are the things I can focus on more so let's actually think about that for a minute So the disadvantages of using a dummy, um, there are three main ones for me. The first one is quite obvious. Yes, it's not a real person. It can't fight back and it can't respond. So anything where you would actually need to have a specific reaction from your opponent, you can try to replicate it, but it's always going to be artificial um, that surprise aspect and someone's timing when you're trying to do a foot sweep or something those are going to be harder to do with a dummy or in some cases they might actually be impossible like if you're expecting someone to jerk up after you do a snap down that's not physically possible it's not really going to happen the second disadvantage is actually it's something i think everyone understands but it's not something i think people readily think about, and that is that the dummy doesn't have a skeleton. And that means it's it's going to bend in ways, unless you've taken precautions against it, that will be odd. Um, the perfect example are the legs. The legs don't have any bones in them, so they're going to flop around in weird directions, honestly. And in doing so, they're going to, I mean, if you're trying to shoot for a single leg and, you know, like, put your shoulder into the knee um the knee will actually be able to you know bend like that backwards and it's not really going to be a realistic analog to a human being i've mitigated this to some extent with mine by actually taping metal bars to the legs and using that to stabilize the legs by the way in hindsight if you're going to do that um, i would wrap the legs in some sort of foam rubber or something because uh, trust me you know, the, the steel bar crashing against your shin when you're training is a mistake you only make one or two times. Um, and that's a big problem in some cases. In other cases, it's actually weird because it doesn't really replicate the human body all that well. For example, you can't really bend it at the hips very much. Mine will go to about like that, and that's about it. You can't get it to round the back or anything. So things where you would like have to shove someone's head downwards and bring their hips up to get the throw... Um, they're kind of hard to replicate. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it requires a bit of an adjustment on your side. And the third problem is, it's, again, it's a problem, but it's a problem I, I think everyone understands, but at the same time, it's how it's a problem is a little surprising, and that's that the dummy can't stand on itself. Unless you've made some modifications that I don't know about, and if you know how to do that, please tell me in the comments. I'd love to figure that out. But, um... And that actually puts a limit on how quickly you can do some of these throws. Um, 
because again, the dummy can't stand up by itself. It can't stand by itself. So anytime you're doing a throw, you have to make sure you're keeping the dummy upright at the same time. Even if you're wanting to do something like drop Sayonage, you will still need to keep the dummy from falling over backwards or, or from its legs just like sliding out to the back. It's something you can get used to, but it is something you have to get used to in order to effectively train with the dummy. Because otherwise, you just you, you try to do something, it falls over. You try to do something again, it falls over. And it is a constant situation, and there are limits on training with a dummy because of that. Now, what are the advantages of training with a dummy? First advantage to working with a dummy is actually something that's a disadvantage as well. It's not an opponent. It's not a human being, so it doesn't have an ego you have to worry about. It's not trying to do the, oh, you can't throw me situation. And it just sits there and lets you practice. Meaning you get to really 100% focus on your, the mechanics of your throw. Are you getting under his hips correctly? Are you placing your foot for the foot sweep right? Are you able to really lift him up and do everything efficiently? It really lets you 100% without interference, without someone being a bit of a jerk and not wanting to be able to be the guy who gets thrown by the white belt, even though I'm a jiu-jitsu blue belt. Um, that's a big advantage, actually. It really helps you solidify the technique in your mind, and it lets you really get a bit more confidence in the actual throw itself. And that's a problem for me because obviously when you're rolling, no one wants to be the guy who gets thrown. So it's, it's a bit less cooperative. The second big advantage is that it really lets you 100% con learn controlling the throw. And what I mean by that, it's more, you don't have to worry about just whipping out that throw as quickly as you can to get your hip on if you're training judo. You can really focus on, like for example, if I'm doing Tomori Nage and I'm laying myself down and I'm basically in this plane on the throat, it really lets me focus on making sure he can go 180 degrees in the other direction, we form a line. Or I can focus on making him go like 90 degrees to me. I can really play around and learn to control him mid-flight in that throw, which I think is a really, really good talent to have. It really lets you gain com comfort in your throw and gain control and learn how to make those slight adjustments mid-throw that will still get you the position you need. Really, really good for that sort of training. The third really, really beneficial aspect of the training is that it also lets you focus on the effortless nature of a throw, honestly. Um, when you're dummy training, the only thing you should actually be using strength for is setting up the dummy, um, getting him off the ground, pulling him up, and standing him back up. The throw itself should be 100% easy. It should really feel almost effortless. And if it's not, then you're doing something wrong. And it really lets you isolate that and focus where am I getting that wrong. The last two or three throws in this series, actually, I had that problem with. Um, I was really just kind of, I, I would literally go when I was trying to do the throw. And especially for a sacrifice throw, that's a really, really bad idea. That's horrible technique. And by the time I was practicing these throw over the throws through the week and at the end of the week, I actually really solved that problem. The last two throws uh, became so effortless, I was surprised they were a problem in the, in the first place. And the final thing that um, sacrifice, well, not sacrifice throws, but dummy training, and especially the way I set up the sac sacrifice throw series really helps with is muscle memory slash procedural memory. Muscle memory is a bit of a misnomer. Um, People think muscle memory means I throw a punch this way a thousand times and I can now do this automatically. And if I need to throw a punch over here, well, this needs another 1,000 repetitions. And that's not muscle memory. Muscle memory is procedural memory. It is your brain memorizing a process. And that's also why I've structured the training the way I did so that you Instead of doing one sacrifice throw, one hip throw, one foot sweep, blah, 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 it's all sacrifice throws. And by making every single one of them related throws, you are constantly repeating the same 
process and isolating that in your mind and getting into this real mindset of sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. Understanding how the mechanics work, understanding process work, understanding when you need to go fast, when you need to set up, when is that point of no return. And by giving yourself many different examples of the same process, I think that solidifies it even more in your mind. It is the case for me. And that really reinforces the whole concept of all the throws you're working on. And it's a big help. And then finally, obviously, since it's not fighting back, you can really focus on the things you're bad at. Um, I'm making it a point in right now in this, uh, in this session of dummy sessions that I'm doing, always to have a couple of throws in there I am just really, really horrible at. Things I absolutely suck at. And in doing so, I have to be honest, I'm noticing a huge improvement in not just the throw technique themselves, but in my comfort doing them. There are a couple of throws in here I'm actually wanting to tempt, I'm tempted now to actually use in my next couple of judo sessions, um, what, with the exception of one that would be illegal. But the point is, is I'm actually wanting to see if I can try pulling these off against some of my training partners in judo. I would not have done that a week ago. And again, for one week, one week, for one week, that's actually a really big run of progress. So, without further ado, let's actually have a look at the series of throw I throws. I do these the same way I did the series of throws from last week. Four minutes each side with a 30 second break between throws and with a one minute break between each side. So I'll do every throw on one side, four minutes throwing, 30 second break. And then when I switch to the other side, so from right to left, then I take a one minute break because it does get exhausting constantly picking up the dummy. That's again, picking up a dead person basically. And that whole thing takes me about an hour. And it's a good hour of training and you're actually feeling pretty tired after that. So have a look, tell me what you think. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, next week I'm going to do things a bit differently. Uh, next week I want to focus on Deashigarai. I am horrible at this sweep. I'm terrible at any and all foot sweeps. It's not even something I'm close to being good at. And I'm wanting to do structure the video a bit differently as well. I'm not going to show a series of sweeps like I did with the sacrifice throws. I will be training like that, but I'm not going to film it like that this time. I think that's kind of clear to everyone. Instead, I'm going to do a progress over time, a case study on Deyashi Barai. So I'm going to start at the week 
and basically film my progress over the entire week. How am I doing with De Ashibarai? I'm also going to be incorporating a couple of other drills. Um, one is something I've seen someone else on YouTube do, and I've taken what I consider to be the next couple of logical steps with how that can be incorporated in day-to-day -day training to work on specific aspects specifically for De Ashibarai. Hopefully, I am able to get as good at, at De Ashibarai at the end of the week as I got with the two, last two or three throws in this Sacrifice Theory series. So, fingers crossed, hopefully I'm actually able to pull out De Ashibarai by the end of next week. We'll see. Thank you for watching, and um, yeah, turn off YouTube and hit the mats. I mean, what else have you got to do? It's, all, it's a pandemic lockdown. <laughs>